All right, we're going to take a look at the uh, chart for CASPA. And uh, first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been charting stocks and, um, and indexes for about 25 years <laughs> and actually have charted the S&P 500 every day, with rare exception, um, for the last 12 years. So anyway, I uh, just want to... Take a, take a look at a couple of things that are going on here in the CASPA chart that, that make it kind of interesting. The first thing is, I think we have a long-term support line uh, down here, this lower purple line. You can see uh, that it, uh, ignore this opening candle here. That's just, uh, I don't think that's, that's worth paying any attention to whatsoever. But what's interesting is we, we do have a low back in October of 2022, and we have this line when extended out. We have two touches in, in, in uh, February uh, of this year. If we make a parallel line to this and just say, well, let's just see what happens if we make a parallel line and slide it up and let it, let it tag uh, the highs of uh, last November, it just so happens, and I say that kind of sarcastically, just so happens to line up with what I believe is probably a fairly, uh, a fairly decently reliable point back uh, very near the open uh, when, when the trade and view chart started to get fed some data. So anyway, uh, there's a touch on the upper line, and then we slide back, take a couple months, uh, and, and hit the lower line, hit it again, then we break up. Uh, you could look at this two and a half month period. Uh, I, I think you could make the case that this was a consolidation triangle. Uh, I don't have those lines up there because uh, I just didn't want to clutter the chart up too much. But now let's zoom in. And I think I want to go to a one hour chart here. They're kind of funny. Uh, there is the, uh, uh, the what uh, what has so far been the all-time high right here uh, in in March or early March, and we sort of dipped back, came back, didn't quite make that level again, and then we hit a slide, and and it was here's where it gets kind of funny because when we were in this, uh, come on. There we go. When we were in this descending channel, pretty clearly defined, by the way, uh, I, I want to encourage people who think that cryptocurrencies cannot be charted. I want to encourage you to look at what happened during that four day period. At one point, we actually slid underneath descending support. That is often, often uh, a sign of a bottom. And why is that? Well, it's, it's the converse of when you have a blow-off top. What happens in markets? It just so happens that the people who tend to mark the bottoms and mark the tops are the emotional traders. They're the people who are driven purely by emotion. They sell in fear at the bottom, and sadly, they either uh, cover or um, exhibit uh, FOMO at the tops. So they basically take things out of range, sort of giving you a clue, hey, probably going to be a bottom. And in this particular case, uh, it's funny, I, I made this little note and stuck it in the telegram, and it's capitulation, emotional selling from the last idiots to sell good riddance, and... Uh, and I posted that actually uh, when we were still in this channel after we'd already come off that low, admittedly, but then we did get the breakout. After that breakout, we got a consolidation. That consolidation uh, was a little confusing. It's a little noisy. At one point, I thought it was a, a, a sort of a, a fairly symmetrical looking triangle, but um, we broke down here and then rebounded, and, and it actually, sometimes you just have to, to say, well, I had it wrong. 
And so I think really what this was was a, a little bit more of a uh, a little bit more of a typical bull uh, flag. So we broke out from that um, actually uh, last night, and and now we have come up to a level uh, that is approaching this purple line. And that's the line that I think if we can get over, guys, if we can get over this purple line, especially, and, and, and again, you know, maybe we adjust it to where it tags the, the, the highs that we saw them this morning. I don't know. I don't think that would be a bad thing to do, but I'm leaving it right where it is. The idea being is that if we have a dip, we have a bigger dip, and if we have another dip over here and then we end up getting over this purple line, that pattern would become an inverted head and shoulders continuation pattern. And where would that uh, target be from that? Well, you measure the depth of this, and wherever it might, and it has not yet, wherever it might break out over this purple line, you measure the same distance to the upside. And in this case, uh, it would it would almost certainly be uh, over two cents. So we're looking potentially uh, at a 60% uh, increase in value from where we sit right now at about uh, 1.27 cents. So I just wanted to share that with you. This is an interesting chart. Of course, we we have this uh, this other line right here, this this blue line. Um, I won't bore you with all of the details, but there there was a book written by uh, uh, John McGee, uh, and I can't remember Edward's first name because it was really John McGee who did the book. And John McGee has rules for trading on inverted head and shoulders patterns, whether they're bottoms or uh, continuation patterns. And one of those rules is uh, coming back to a line that is drawn from the bottom of the inverted head through the uh, bottom of the right shoulder. Now, I'm not sure. Uh, this I, I really can't call this the right shoulder yet, but I still think this is an important trend line. So what's the goals for the bulls? Well, if you're a bull, you want to get this thing over this purple line, because if you do that, you're looking at a run to, uh, to probably at least uh, two cents, and that would be significant. So hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, hearing me out on this, and hey, I'm, I'm not too proud. Uh, I put a little donation address with this. If you got something out of it, you can tip me. I'm not going to I'm not going to say no to that. Anyway, thanks. Take care.